All right, let's get to Randy. What's what's up? All right. When you guys did your latest anniversary show and you had Mark Madden on and he was talking about his fallout with Ric Flair um, and he was saying like he's saddened because it's this really long friendship that's now kind of ended. And Rick's had that with Triple H, Arn Anderson. What is it about Rick that he runs off the, you know, assuming he is the common denominator. What is it about him that seems to run off these like decades long friendships? Is it his addiction? Is it just the way he is? Is he like, what's the deal? I'll tell you that. I'll, I'll tell you my opinion. I have a strong opinion on what I think it is. I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm just looking on human, human, human behavior. Okay. When you're talking about guys like Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair and stuff, I think bro, you're talking about people that, you know, you're, you're a professional wrestler. Okay. So like you're, you're, you're not like, you're not Tom Brady. You're not, um, you know, you're not Peyton Manning and stuff. Like that. You're a person that like, you know, you're not, you don't have, you're, you're a guy that's like, not from like, like professional wrestling is not a legitimate genre to get into. It's you're getting into a genre of like, you're simulating a genre of, of realism. Right. So when you get into this business, it's like, I don't think that people that like guys that like, like, I, I don't like well, me personally. I got into the business because like I had an in to get a tryout because I had a, a friend of the family that knew Ole Anderson and they had a school and stuff and everything. And I was a huge fan of wrestling and I was athletic. Right. I wasn't a, a five star, you know, McDonald's. He was very I, 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 athletic. He was the leading scorer on the girls' soccer team, but continued. That's, that's nice. a very cheap shot. Okay. That's true. But Why did the night? I played all this, but I didn't play them at a high, like college level or, you know, all county or the, but I was like decent at sports. I just played everything. Right. And I got in, I got into wrestling right now. I, I could not imagine, like, I've, I've never been in these, like the thing is like, you know, you, when you say like walk a mile, walk a mile in my shoes, you can't really get into the, the mindset of somebody that from humble beginnings, are are elevated into okay? You're the number one guy in an industry, and you are looked as that look like your know, people are looking at you as like you're the best in your field in a field that draws millions of fans to watch us perform. And the pressure that you must feel when you get into that spot, I can't, I I don't, I can't like comment on like what makes Ric Flair that way because I don't know what it's like to be in a position where you're on the top and things happen to you where you get publicly embarrassed, where stories are written about you, where you're thinking, I don't know how you re how I would react because I've never been in that spot. Conan might have a, a perspective because he's been in the, in a top spot. And it's like, you know, like, like we have different perspectives. I, I don't know. Like, I can't like Ric Flair. Do you I, mean I, when, I just, when, when somebody meets him, like, I want to meet the nature boy, Ric Flair. I don't want to meet Richard Fleer yeah, or course. whatever his real yeah, name is. Of course. You think you, is that what you mean? Or I've, I've met Richard Fleer. Yeah. I've hung out with Richard Fleer because me and Ric Flair were always super cool with each other because we, we loved hockey. And when we would go to a town and it'd be like, you know, hey, hey, where you, where you go? Like the, be, like, like the Blackhawks are playing. They'd be on, on TV, be on TV. It'd be dinner time. And, hey, hey, you want to you want to go watch a Blackhawks game? We go to the the bar downstairs. We eat, we drink, and we watch which we watch the Blackhawks. Like we, like we should because we shared a common interest. So like like I'm sharing a, a common interest. Like like one of the things that Ric Flair was very passionate about was like he loved hockey, and I loved hockey. And, and we would bond. We'd we'd have drink. We'd watch the games and stuff and talk sports and stuff. And thing. But it's like I wasn't like you know the, we do that all the time. Like once every blue moon. Like we should, you know, something, but like, I, it's weird that he has all these falling outs with people. I shared moments with him. Other people have shared like long relationships with him. And like, I don't know, like what, you know, what his, like Matt, man's pretty upset because like, you know, they, they've, they were friends for God knows 35 years, you know, and Rick kind of like stabbed him in the back. But I think that was like, it might've been Rick just being, I've got this ego. I'm Ric Flair. I can't let, I have to like get, I got to get over on this guy. You know what I'm saying? And in that moment, he buried Mark and it's like they, they, the relationship is now That's not cool. Cause Mark's been there for him. I don't know all right. the details so, so, for me to even talk, but 
you know, Mark's always been a big fan of him, and he even wrote the forward to his book. And you know, yeah. so I was no, very no, he sad. Re, he, re, he rewrote the book that the, the, yeah, the original right. guy wrote in WWE. He wrote re, he rewrote the book. Yeah, right. Like the Rick Flair books. Like Mark Man rewrote that. I mean, it made it interesting. You know, right. so it's like yeah, yeah. It's just well, a, it's a weird... I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, Randy. When I I grew up, I was in a real big wrestling fans that I went to all the matches and I had posters, and <laughs> but I did watch it. And I loved Ric Flair. I thought it was the coolest thing on TV. And so when I actually met him in WCW, and this was when they were still NWA, uh, imagine the Fantastics were still a tag team. Mm -hmm. uh, Stan Hansen was wrestling still uh, in NWA doing shows for them. Yeah. And I remember when I met Ric Flair, I was like, holy there's a nature boy and bro, he was a complete. And then I went to, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Cause I've never had like, I've, when okay, I, I'm, I'm going to give you one specific example. Yeah. When, uh, the other, then I met him in WWE and I went there with my boss and he, and Antonio he met, yeah, he met me and my boss and was like, he told me now I'm younger than Rick. I don't know by how many years, but I am younger than him. 19 years, 19 years. How you doing, sir? And I was like, why is this calling me sir? That's kind of disingenuous to me. But anyways, and then he was like, yeah, yeah, how you guys doing? And then he told the guy from security, he said, I heard it. He told the guy from security, we were behind this door and he didn't think we heard him. And he goes, don't let these guys backstage. And bro, we were invited guests of Vince McMahon. We did just roll up and at the stadium like a bunch of marks trying to see who we could meet. We were invited by Vince McMahon. He didn't ask. He didn't care. And he tried to get us kicked out. So I had to go to Pat Patterson and go, I don't know what <laughs> Ric Flair's problem is, but he's trying to get us kicked out. And Pat had to go over there and set him straight. He probably so, smelled like weed. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you. Is that you a possibility? Smell. No, I would not right. smell like weed around Vince. <laughs> okay. that, number two. Uh, number two. Uh, I heard him on various accounts which means more than once, while he was drunk, which is not an excuse, make comments that I considered racist. And I also heard him on his podcast, I don't know if he was drunk or not, with Conrad Probably. making comments what I was considered racist. When his daughter got married to a Mexican, I was like, ah, karma, deal with that. <laughs> but uh, I even, and now when, I went, when he went to Triple Mania, he was there with Andrade, and he was like a whole different person. He was, hey, Conan, how you doing? You know, you know, like, good, good to see you. And I was like, I could be a tremendous because I got a lot of power here. I could be a tremendous. There's a lot of ways I can get back at Rick. I could embarrass him publicly in front of all the boys, which I probably would have done 20 years ago. I let it slide because I know we change as we grow older, you know. And I just showed him love. I showed him no disdain. I didn't bring up the past. I just said, hey, I hope this <laughs> matured. You're in, a, you're in my house as a guest. And he, you're acting accordingly. I can't ask for more. So I showed him love. I later saw him at the NWA convention, which was kind of sad because he was still drinking after he said he wasn't. And he still showed me love. You know, so. But when I first met Rick, he was a complete. You know, the, yeah, it's kind of a. It's a sad, it's kind of a sad look at the whole family. You know, he's lost a son. Um, right. Charlotte is a young woman. She's on her third marriage. Right. Um, oh, sh and I hope she's, I it hope is, she's it's happy an now. Absolute, it's an absolutely dysfunctional family. You know, and I, okay, so you know, absolutely did, did. Right. What, can did. You say about, what can you say about but, a young me, lady whose the father was probably never wanna, there? Exactly. Never there, I want to ask you I, I want to talk, talk about this, though. I don't want to ask you because I've never, I don't think I've ever asked you this, Conan. It's like, you know, when we, you know, I guess you had connected with Rick in NWA and w, w, you know, uh, WWF w. before you came to WCW and Ric Flair was a, a, a big dog in WCW, right? Right. What did you, when, because I was like a guy just like, I'm, I'm from the suburbs of Marietta, Georgia. You know, I got into wrestling. I did the indies for a few years, and I got into WCW. And I'm like, I, I go to you know. Would you refer? Go, would you consider yourself a kick when you were younger? Yes. All right. Okay. So, but what what was it like? Because I was like, I got the vibe. Because I remember, like, I don't know if you remember this when. 
you know, it's kind of early in in our when we came into. I don't know if you, I don't even know if you were there yet. I'm not sure because I can't. My memories, but but like this is very early in WCW when Eric was burying Rick. Yeah, he was there, right? And I was like, you know, it was kind of like very weird and uncomfortable for me because you know, like we grew up watching like these guys and like some of these guys like you know legends in the business and like you know the and stuff like and when i was like you know i, I come in there I mean, we're, we're young you know we're, we're in our 20s you know these guys are in their 40s and like you know something like, and like you know all, all of a sudden i'm catching like these these beefs of like you know rick flair's got heat with a lot of people and eric's burying him like in me and like it has a meeting of all the boys and he's like burying rick in the meeting. Well, they and suit, I'm like, they suit each other. You know, well, but, but I'm saying, you know, for people like me, this was like a very weird. Is this the famous meeting where he said the only people that have ever drawn were right. uh, oh, Piper, that, that Hogan, and Macho? Hogan, 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 Hogan Piper, and Savage, there, Cody, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Cody, Piper, and Savage, there, right? or whatever. Cody, were you? you were Bro, there, yeah, right? I was were, definitely there because remember, so what, what, what was your vibe? What, what did you get out? What was your vibe there? Were you uncomfortable? Yeah, I think the same vibe as everybody else. Everybody lost respect for Eric because you can say what you want about it about Rick, but he carried that company for many years and made a lot of losers uh, look like a million bucks. He, bro, NWA, WCW is not NWA or WCW without Ric Flair, without right. a. F- out he was the man the whole and i remember, is and I remember yeah clear, and right? i remember when he was saying and i'm gonna make sure that i bet i'm gonna make sure that i sue him and i bankrupt him mm-hmm. right and i was like wow that's f- dirty I remember, dude i remember we all we all kind of looked down we were like I, yeah I, everybody I lost respect for eric no, that day I do, I do remember this everybody was kind of like look at each other like what the f- is that? Yeah. Like, and, then we're all, like, and then all the mexicans <laughs> all the yeah. mexicans who knew about me and you know, in Mexico, they were like, "What is he talking about? You're th- they're the only guys that have made money. They should he should know how much money you made in Mexico." And I was like, F- "That guy, I don't really give a, f-, you know, which I didn't." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's very. It was a weird. Yeah, Ric Flair's been a very polarizing character. Yeah, you could say what you want about him, but you can't deny his you influence say that, I'll, on the I'll company. I'll say this too. He 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 was he fathered. One of the worst wrestlers in the business and one of the best wrestlers in the business. He did. That's funny. David, David Flair did. and then Charlotte. I mean, right. Charlotte is, is arguably, she might go down as like the best woman's worker of all time. Yeah, and but it's David. Flair's daughter, you know, which, and that's, I, I think that, and if you listen, bro, it's funny too, because Madden told me on his podcast, right? I didn't, I didn't never really listen to any of them or anything, but Madden would call me afterwards and always complain about, you know, Rick runs to like, you know, if your man was always on point with like telling me like that that whole th- I saw that thing breaking down. Like like I knew that thing was not gonna fix man man a month and a half before that, you know, the, the the podcast ended, he was like, I can't see myself doing it. Like he, he wanted to quit, right? And he's like, you know, Rick Rick wants to talk about like doesn't want to talk about old school stuff and like he wants to talk about modern wrestling, but like then I bring up Jay White and he doesn't even know who he is. You know, so it's like so it's like you know, they have like weird these weird things, but it's like I you know I don't, I don't know it's like Rick is like uh I, I just like bro I'm here's what said, happens when, no, no, when you're say the, go ahead when you're a superstar of that magnitude and you're treated like a f- god all the, everywhere you go and everybody's sucking your <laughs> and putting you over you know in your walk bubble, a mile in his shoes that's all you know say, like, it's hard yeah. not to f- lose sense with reality you know right but say, still I, it's no excuse for being you do do with the pressure yeah. Of looking like yeah. you know, and bro, bro he's, a, he's a drinker, so he was prone to like missteps and mm-hmm. you know things like going sideways in his life. Well, one of the like, saddest you know, things I've heard, little... one of the saddest things I ever heard, and I'm not gonna say his name, but a good friend of mine in WWE told me that you know Ric Flair was in a bar and he was buying drinks for everybody and he was doing the Ric Flair stick. This was probably about four years ago, and that everybody was like, "Dude, get off the bar! You're like too old for that." Yeah. You know, and he doesn't realize it. Right. Yeah, that's it. He hasn't aged gracefully, I right. don't think. And that's kind of how that, I, but, I, don't, but, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know what? Honestly, I think if Rick would have like quietly gone into the good night, like, like just quietly retired, or like from, but, but I guess he needs, he probably needs the money. But like after the thirty for thirty on ESPN, mm. like re, in recent memory, that's the height of popularity he's had. And now it's like Dark Side of the Ring came out and kind of, 
And it's like, it's just a negative. And I'm wondering if, like, you know, this this last match thing is just another chance for him to feel like, I'm, I, I want to be Ric Flair again. Yeah. yeah you know, because, yeah, like, like, on a personal level of a guy that's been at the top of the industry, that has experienced supreme highs and supreme lows because he's a guy that experienced supreme highs. That I just wonder if, like, this last match thing is something like, I got to feel good about myself again, and I want this. I, well, I, not you know, only that, like, bro. Yeah. He's, as usual, he's got a fan. Probably Conrad Thompson grew up watching him. He married his daughter, and he's like, hey, I got yeah. this idea. for Bro, he told me the idea that he's going to do for the show. Mm. Right? Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, he's going to yeah. give Ric Flair a real good send-off, and Conrad's a sharp guy. He's very real lucky sharp. that he's got Conrad around yeah. him. And yep. that's good, too. Because yeah. especially with, like, the Twitter mobs these days, yeah. there's people that kind of want to, like Ric Flair's career to end in misery. Yeah, you know, right. there's like those people that are just one of the, you know, you know, the vile people on social media, like they're like snakes in the grass, like literally, like you walk through you know, the field, uh, like, you know, but like, you know, let's go ahead. You see on, um, you know, is that a brain guess, hat, by the like, way? Uh, this is an A's o hat. A's. Oh, A's. But I'm oh, watching right. the Dodgers, you know the A's hat? Dodgers Braves stink. fan. Well, yeah. And you know, you know, well, like, one side's got like, Max yeah. Muncie and the other side's got uh, Matt Olson, both former A's. Yeah, right. You have an all-star depth chart of former A's. <laughs> I'm going Probably. back and forth to the hockey game. The A's, always, game. Right the A's always make great players and then they trade them off. That's the story yeah. of the A's. I'm yeah. a big save, A's save fan. The money. Bro, I'm an A's fan from the 70s. I could tell you the whole roster. Conan, if, if, the, if the A's come to Vegas and they go to the World Series, we come to watch a game. I will. <laughs> I, can. I can come too. I'll make it. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It 100, my co-host, Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury Disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!